Sir? Oh. Going to read uh, the names of Pembroke citizens that volunteered for the town or were on town boards that passed away during the previous year. William R. Buckley, Pembroke Arts Festival. Kathleen T. Cuneo, Pembroke Public Schools Food Division. Henry Hank Daggert, Pembroke Fire Department and DPW Commissioner. William R. Hussey, Town Forest Committee and the Pembroke Kiwanis Club. Anthony Carmen Nunes, the Commission on Disabilities. W. Norman Pulaski, Pembroke Historical Society. David Summergrad, Pembroke Elementary School Principal. And Robert Whitelaw, Pembroke Selectman. In its Points to Ponder section, Reader's Digest carried this moving story by Sai Fei. An elderly man was weeping noticeably while standing alone at Washington's Vietnam Veterans Memorial. Moved by the sight, a young man walked over to the old man, put his hand on his shoulder and said, one of yours, sir? The old man said softly, not one of them, son, all of them. The same spirit moves us this day to gather once again to remember, to give thanks and to pray for all our servicemen and women who have made the ultimate sacrifice in service to our nation, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. We pray today that their souls now rest in the hands of God. We pray also for the families of those who have lost loved ones in service to our country. May God grant them comfort and consolation. We pray for all those men and women who have served our nation so honorably throughout our history. May God bless and keep them. We pray for our servicemen and women who have struggled to come home, who carry the physical and psychological wounds of war, May they know God's healing and comfort. Help us to walk with them, to support them in their personal battles. And of course, we pray for our active service men and women who stand up to protect and serve the Constitution of the United States of America, who uphold our democracy and our rule of law and especially for those who are serving in harm's way. God, we ask you to protect them, to watch over them, to walk with them, and to bring them safely home to their families and loved ones. We pause to remember all those who have died in service to our nation. We give thanks to God this day for their service and for their families. We ask you to bless them and to watch over them always. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.
stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streamed and the rockets break Whereas while the nation was still recovering from the horrors of the Civil War, people in cities and towns across the country gathered to honor those Union and Confederate soldiers who had given their lives celebrating the first Decoration Day. And whereas after World War I, the nation came together again to honor those who had fallen in the service of their country, renamed Memorial Day, the last Monday in May, is when people remember and honor the memory of all men and women who had fought and died in all American war wars and conflicts. And whereas throughout the country's history of thousands of Massachusetts citizens have fought in wars and conflicts to defend our safety and way of life. And whereas the legacy of patriotism and dedication to a country is an inspiration to all Americans. And whereas it is appropriate that all Massachusetts citizens remember the bravery of those who gave their lives so that the sacrifices serve as a reminder of the cost of your freedom. Now, therefore, I, Charles D. Baker, Governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, do hereby proclaim May 31st, 2021, to be Memorial Day. It is my honor to represent the Pembroke Select Board in cognizance of Memorial Day. Thanks to the Town Memorial Committee and all those that have assisted in the preparations for this virtual Memorial Day observance, it is important for all of us to recognize our veterans who have given the ultimate sacrifice for America's liberty. Our war dead hold a profound place in our hearts, minds, and emotions. Every one of us has been touched in some way by a veteran who has died for this country. On this day, we remember our departed friends, relatives, or fellow citizen veterans who have fallen in service of the flag, with the most recent being Matthew Bean, Brian McPhillips, and Jesse Crudup. To their Gold Star families, I offer them my condolences for their losses and my thanks for raising such fine young men who admirably represented our town and our nation. It's difficult for me to know and understand how they, as parents, feel. The profound anguish of losing a son, alongside the beaming pride of knowing how well your son served and sacrificed. Like all of you, I too have been affected by the loss of our fallen soldiers. My childhood friend, Eddie Gargano, was killed in action in Beirut. I remember how we as boys played war, using sticks as guns, dividing up teams, and using what we knew of military strategy to win the game. Eddie was always the best at this. He was one, his one wish was to become a Marine. He did this, and in 1983, he successfully took part in the evasion of Grenada. Shortly afterwards, he was ordered to Beirut, Lebanon. His story is best told by his fellow comrade who wrote this. It was January 1984 and a young corporal had just taken my place in a working party to the U.S. Embassy in Beirut. I fell back on my rack exhausted after two trips to the embassy filling sandbags and running four-hour patrols at night. My sleep was fitful, as it always was in the route. I awoke to the news that young, my young, the young corporal, my friend, Eddie Gargano, had been killed in an ambush at the landing zone near the embassy. I walked outside screaming and crying off and on, cursing the Shoof Mountains in the distance and the cowardly terrorists that inhabited them. As an NCO, he didn't have to go. As a Marine NCO, he did. The ultimate sacrifice? Not many of us know what this means, really. I do. I say a silent prayer to God and bless my friend Eddie for allowing my family and I to live and breathe free in America. Thanks, Eddie. Semper Fi. If you ever find yourself in Eddie's hometown of Quincy, stop by his memorial stone in front of Snug Harbor Elementary School. 
We here in Pembroke have our own Town Memorial Green, celebrating our veterans of every branch of the military. And I ask all of you to stop by, salute, say thank you, and most of all, remember the sacrifices made by those brave men. It's been an honor to represent the Town of Pembroke in this Memorial Day observance. Thank you, and God bless America. Hi folks, my name is Anthony O'Brien and I'm a veteran of the United States Navy. And I wanna say that it's Memorial Day weekend and it's a time to reflect and it's a time for us to commemorate and memorialize those who have gone before, especially those who have made the ultimate sacrifice for us. I'm a veteran, I did a tour in the Marine Corps and uh, also did a tour in the Navy and I was honored to be discharged from the Navy as a Lieutenant Commander. Since then, in my last 20 years, helping veterans has been the cause of my life. Uh, I wanna thank Art and all of the folks from Pembroke Town News um, for putting on these, these videos and putting this event together. Um, I, I've heard good news recently that old friend um, Dave McPhillips um, is back in the veterans office and, um, and certainly, the McPhillips family is the type of family 
that we think about most highly today during Veterans Day. Um, and that is our Gold Star families. And we can't thank them for their service and sacrifice enough. You know, we, we who served, a lot of us take a lot of pride in different things that we do. But most of us also say that a veteran is a veteran is a veteran. Um, regardless of what you did, whether you were flying a plane, flying a truck, flying a submarine, uh, you, we all served. Regardless of what your era was, um, whether it be World War II or Korea, Vietnam, or the actions in the Middle East. And that siren reminds me, and uh, Art, Art just brought that in as a prop. Thank you, Art. Because we're here in the glorious town of, of Pembroke that I love so much and where I used to, used to live and work. And we're here on the steps of Town Hall and also next to this beautiful Navy anchor. So we felt it would be an appropriate place to give some remarks about Memorial Day. But regardless of what a veteran did, and, and survived, a veteran is a veteran is a veteran. I'm wearing the hat of a, you know, it's funny too, because when I was growing up as a kid, not far from here, when I was growing up as a kid, not far from here, my folks taught me, and my dad was a veteran in the Marine Corps in Korea, my folks taught me that whenever you hear a siren, you want to say a little prayer. And you want to say, God bless them and save them. And that's not just for possible victims that those police and fire officials are going to help out, but also, of course, for those people in uniform. Um, and when it comes to wonderful thoughts like thank you for your service, um, my family and I, we put an emphasis on that it's not just those in uniform that served in the military, but also our brothers and sisters and the police departments, the fire departments, and the first responders. So I say, especially in this month, which is also Law Enforcement Memorial Month, um, that I say thank you for your service as well. Uh, and we have to say thank you to our public, to our fellow citizens. Um, it's very common that I hear folks say, uh, I wear the uniform at different ceremonies. I get the opportunity to, to wear stuff today that, is, that are mementos for my service and, and represent those branches. And I frequently get people say, thank you for this service. And of course, I say thank you for your support. And I emphasize that because if, if the folks that serve in the military, and only 1% only of, the, of the American public serve in the military on any given day, and only 6% of the American public are veterans, but if, if they are our warriors, our in case of war break glass folks and ensure our national security, both, both in the country, but most especially outside of the country on foreign lands, then I like to remind folks that people that support us are critical to what we do and we can't do what we do without you. So our folks may be the warriors, but the people that support us your patriots. And believe me, I truly and sincerely mean it, that with, you, with your support, we do our job better. Um, before we heard the siren, I was, uh, I, I, I was about to talk about a friend um, who's uh, Chief Don McFall, and I'm wearing his hat. And Don McFall was a Navy SEAL with SEAL Team 4, and he was killed in the Battle of Panama in 1989. And he had a Navy ship that was named after him. This is an official Navy hat named after Don McFall. And Don McFall and Lieutenant McPhillips, Dave McPhillips' son, Dave, of course, is the veteran service officer here in Pembroke. These are the reasons why we have Memorial Day. And, and those sacrifices have been made for American democracy and freedom for, for centuries now. Um, and America honors that service. Pembroke. Um, like other towns in this area, uh, but Pembroke has had, um, to my knowledge, three Gold Star families in the last 20 years during the war in the Middle East. Um, and uh, that includes the McPhillips family and, and my great friends, uh, the Bean family as well. The towns of uh, Brockton and Plymouth 
and Abington, um, to the best of my memory, have each had two uh, Gold Star families each um, and the sacrifices that come with that. And you and I can only imagine um, the pain that they went through then and they're the exact kind of folks. And I have to tell you that this, this day, this time, it's, it's, it's emotional and it's, it's difficult and it's emotional, especially for folks like myself who are combat veterans trained to be in combat. And yes, we're, we're, we're asked, we're asked to be, uh, less emotional, uh, check your heart at the door because we're going to get in, engaged in some activities where, uh, emotions can get in the way. Um, that, does, that doesn't turn us into machines. That doesn't turn us into robots. We still care. Um, we still uphold the rule of, of, of law, the rule of war, um, and how we treat um, both friendlies and, of course, even the enemy. Um, but it's, it's a tough weekend. And for those Gold Star families that I mentioned, as well as so many others in this very, very patriotic region, Memorial Day, it's not just one day a year out of 365. It's every day and it's tough. And fortunately we have, Art and I were just over in the cemetery. Um, in fact, this is, this is I, we used to live only a block from here and it's a cemetery where I used to take my kids and we used to come and reflect and pray and, and, and think about the sacrifice of folks um, in whatever uniform um, on behalf of our American freedoms and democracy and our rights uh, to make us which is the, the best country on the planet. And, and we say that with humility. We say that with love because there's no country that does more for other countries. And, and I miss those memories and just talking to Art in the, in the cemetery um, brought back uh, some of those things here in Pembroke Center that I cherish so much. But for a lot of us, Memorial Day is every day. And that makes it hard. It's, it's, yeah, I've been I've been to cemeteries all over the country, all over the world. You probably know of many cemeteries uh, from your view of history. American cemeteries all over Europe and the sacrifices they reflect, all over Japan, um, the Philippines. I've been to these cemeteries. I had the incredible blessing when I was at Pearl Harbor, the naval station, that of course was the first point of attack during World War II, and to actually see. The ship, the USS Arizona, where 1,700 shipmates are still entombed, a national monument, a national graveyard. And I've had that blessing to witness that. And I must tell you, it, it, makes, it makes a day like this and going back there with these memories, um, it make, it, it's, it's, a, it's a weird combination of it's hard and it's difficult and it's emotional, but it's also inspiring. It inspires us. Their, their service, their legacy. These families that continue to carry that torch, it inspires us to carry on. And for us on a daily basis to do better for our communities and for our country as much as we can. I'm trying to teach um, my two young boys that uh, as much as I possibly can. And their great mom is doing the same thing. And I know there's a lot of wonderful families in, in this town of Pembroke and in, in, in the area that are doing the same thing. And that's what we need to continue to do. Um, a great opportunity. Um, to, to walk through the cemeteries, take the kids through the cemeteries and explain to them some of the historical references that are on some of these gravestones and markers. Most know my family to be a uh, pretty devout Christian family. And two of, my, two of my favorite readings for the Bible include and make me remember that, you know, military people want peace and military people want peace just as much as the next, the next peace activist, trust me. Um, none of us want to have a friend killed in war or, or, or killed ourselves, of course, and our families don't either. However, on a rare occasion, we got to go and we got to send somebody. And that reminds me of Isaiah 6, 8, which is, send me. If you need somebody, Lord, if you need somebody, America, send me. And and that was really a major motivation for me following my dad and his legacy in the service and wanting to walk in his footsteps because I wanted to serve my country. I wanted to maximize my contribution and, and yes, maximize my own potential. Um, it's 
It's a decision I'd make again in a second, and I would definitely um, advise my children if, if they chose that path to, uh, to do it as well. And then another Bible verse, and of course it's, it's famous, and again, it's emotional. And that, of course, is John 15, 13. We're only here a, a hundred yards away, less than a hundred yards, Art, from a, an incredible stone that is dedicated to the, to the, to the warriors of the town of Pembroke and, the, and, and including the three families uh, and their KIA uh, sacrificing for our country. And, and that is no greater love does a man have, does a woman have, does a person in uniform have, does anybody have, did Jesus have, than to lay down their life, to give their life for a friend, for their beliefs, uh, for their country. John 15, 13. Hold, hold that tight in your heart. So we honor heroes. <laughs> Aren't you killing me? <laughs> Church bells, right? <laughs> they can hear that, right? It's awesome. <laughs> he had sirens going. We, we, we got our anchor. If, if I don't start crying right now, I'm going to kiss this anchor in a second. And now we just had the church bells. Um, wow. Good work, brother. So we honor heroes. We honor heroes in uniform. We thank you for your service. We honor those who have gone before, those who have fallen. We honor their spirits, their legacy. We honor their gold star families. They're right here, always with us, and always uplifting us by the example you set. And, and nowhere, no, nowhere greater than here in the great town of Pembroke. We thank you for your service and your sacrifice. Um, as was said in the famous words coming out of World War II, uh, we will never forget. We will never forget. God bless you. God bless those who are serving now, today, and every day in harm's way, both here in America and overseas. And God bless our incredible country, America. Thank you. Pembroke veterans who have lost in America's wars. The Civil War. Nathaniel Bishop, Ansel Barney, Ansel Brown, Edwin Bosworth, Lucius Chandler, James T. Cummings, James B. Curtis, Robert H. Cornell, Charles Clark, Jacob Curtis, Marshall Chandler, George Ford, Alfred Howe, Alden Howard, John James, Calvin Magone, Marcus Reed, Hiram Stevens, Henry Stevens, Abel Stetson, George Weatherall, World War One, Arthur Church, Harold Shute, Leonard Turner, World War Two, Clarence Wainwright, George Northrup, Robert Carter, Theodore White, Everett Turner, Frederick Mordhart, Arthur Mounts. Ready. Aim at elevation. Fire. Korea. Kenneth Handy. Iraq, Brian McPhillips, Matthew Bean, Jesse Crudup. 
Ready. Aim at elevation. Fire. Merciful Lord, you know the anguish of the sorrowful. You are attentive to the prayers of the humble. Hear your people who cry out to you in their need and strengthen their hope in your lasting goodness. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we command our brothers and sisters who gave their lives in the service of our nation. In the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died, marked with the sign of faith, they will rise on the last day. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. 
open the gates of paradise to your servants and help us to remain who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brothers and sisters forever. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. May all the souls of the faithful departed, especially those service members we remember on this day, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. can never do this without the help of many other people, like uh, the Department of uh, Public Works, Veterans Grave Officers, Girl Scouts, American Legion, Arthur B. Church, and the Town Memorial Committee, of course. And at that, thank you very much for watching.